In this lab, you will examine several different primate skulls in order to create a phylogenetic tree. You will also examine a fox skull as the outgroup for your phylogeny. In addition to the skulls, you will need an empty plastic bin, a foam pad, calipers, a ruler, a funnel, a plastic cup, graduated cylinders, and a container of beads. The skulls are very delicate, so make sure to use the foam square provided and be very careful when handling them. Once you have your foam pad in place, you can familiarize yourself with the different parts of the skull. I'm using the chimpanzee skull for this part of the video, but you can start with any of the available skulls. Each skull includes a detachable mandible, or lower jaw, that houses the lower dentition. The skull itself includes the facial structures like the orbits, the nasal aperture, the maxilla that houses the upper dentition, and the zygomatic arches. The skull also includes the cranium, and at the back of the skull, we can see the occipital crest and the foramen magnum. Now let's take a closer look at the upper and lower dentition. For this lab, you are required to count the total number of teeth for each skull. For the example shown here, the total number of teeth is 32. You are also required to determine the dental formula for each skull. The dental formula is simply half of the upper dentition over half of the lower dentition, broken down by type of tooth. So for this chimpanzee upper jaw, we have two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars. You can differentiate between the premolars and the molars based on the number of visible cusps. In primates, the premolars have two cusps, while the molars have four or five. Coming back to our dental formula, we see that in this case, the upper and lower dentition are the same. So the final dental formula is 2123 over 2123. Examine the skulls to determine the degree of postorbital closure. If we compare the fox, lemur, and macaque skulls, you can see that the area around the eye socket in the fox is completely open. In contrast, the lemur has an additional ring of bone around the eye socket, forming a post-orbital bar. In the macaque, the area behind the eye socket is completely closed, forming a post-orbital plate. Measure the cranial capacity by carefully filling each skull with beads. Work over an empty bin to catch any stray beads and be extremely careful not to damage the skulls during this procedure. Once the skull is full and the beads are level with the opening of the frame and magnum, you can dump the beads into the empty container. Once the skull is completely empty, Carefully pour the beads into a graduated cylinder and record the total volume needed to fill the cranium. While the smaller skulls need to be filled by hand, you may use the funnel and plastic cup to assist filling larger skulls. Use the calipers to measure the length of the skull from the top of the nasal aperture to the back of the skull. Being careful not to change the angle of the calipers, use a ruler to measure the distance between the points and record this value as the skull length. To account for differences in overall skull size between the primates, we can determine the ratio between cranial capacity and skull length.
Once all your data has been collected, you can complete the character matrix and phylogenetic tree in your worksheet.